Hi guys, Stephen here. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about why I pulled out of this commercial to residential conversion. So you can learn exactly why I did this. And if you're looking at doing something similar, the potential issues that you need to look out for with commercial to residential conversions. First, I think it's important that you understand what was for sale, what the profit angle was, the breakdown of all the numbers of my exit strategy. This way you can fully understand how I put the deal together. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to analyze a commercial to residential deal, who to engage to validate your estimates, and what issues to look out for before submitting your offer. So let's go over what exactly was for sale. It was a retail property that was freehold and the asking price was £400,000. It had been used as a betting office and its usage class was sui generis. It had got a total of 1,342 square feet with three floors and ciliary to the ground floor and I'll explain in a moment why that's important. It had an EPC rating of E and it was VA, it was not registered for VAT. So ancillary access is important if you're doing class G for your permitted development right when converting commercial to residential. So class G allows you to confer above a shop up to two flats and you can do this in any area at all. So you can do it in a conservation area, you can do it in a park, national park, and you can do it with listed buildings. But that upper floors have to be ancillary to the ground floor commercial shop. So that's why that's important. And you have to be able to prove that. So make sure you take pictures of that ancillary access to prove that that was the case before you started any work. The property was in flood zone three, which means you're probably gonna need to get a flood risk assessment done on that property when you're changing its use. So let's go through the floor plans. The ground floor then was just one big open area. And the ground floor was a total of 490 square feet which is about 45 square meters, is around about 3.4 meters wide by 10.4 meters deep. Had a rear fire door exit at the back with a window that had been bricked up, which is also important. So you could unbrick up that window, let natural light come through there. At the front there is fully glazed with the door at the front. So in the first floor then we have a total area of 355 square feet. This is a big open room with a staircase in it had two windows to the front and it had two kind of like old fireplaces bricked up to the side of it. And then at the back, there was a bathroom area with a window to it and another little room with a window to that. And there was a window on the back there as well. So it had a good amount of natural light coming into this floor. Then we go up to the second floor. The second floor was a similar size again, similar layout, 359 square feet. This was a bit more open plan, didn't have the back rooms, they were just knocked through two windows at the front, and this also had two windows at the rear. And onto the third floor then, we've got a room size that's about 138 square feet. And what I was thinking with this is that that would just be another bedroom, an ensuite bedroom up there. You could put a dormer window in there, make that room feel a lot bigger, and then make that two bedroom across the second floor and the third floor, and make uh, another flat on the first floor and my original plan was to do a commercial property on the ground floor and split the back off so that the back section of that would be a flat and the front bit would be just be a small shop. Then we got the rear yard. Now the rear yard had loads of stuff in the back of it and I wasn't quite sure about that because when I was looking at Nimbus maps to analyze this deal, I saw that the rear yard was part of the title on this and that's what it came across when I got the title from the sales agent. And it also had this corridor that ran along the back of it. You can see from this picture where there's a gate across it, there's a door open there, but, but beyond that, that's a corridor that leads all the way to the street on the side. But what I found out through my due diligence was the commercial properties on the left, the three properties there, where the doors back onto the rear yard, they've got rights of way over that rear yard. So initially I was thinking that the rear area there could be used as a garden, a patio area for the rear flat. That was my initial thought. But then when I found out that they had these rights of way across it, that restricted the use to make it a private garden. Also an interesting thing was that the back there, there was what looked like a doorway that had been bricked up. It had different color bricks, which is a telltale sign that something's changed. So there was an opportunity, I thought, to reopen that doorway in that wall and go directly in and out through that way rather than going along that narrow laneway. So the profit angle with this one is I wanted to convert under permitted development rights 
the uppers. So it's going to use class G for the two flats above the shop and class M for the conversion of the flat at the back of, of the um, shop. And my exit strategy on this was to hold it and refinance the deal at 70% loan to value or something like that, 75% loan to value, depending on what I could get to get my money back out and to go again on the next deal. So I always try and look at the people that would rent the property from you. It's in a good area, it was in Maidenhead. It had good transport links into London. It was very close to the center of Maidenhead High Street. And I just thought it would be great for young professionals. So let's run through the numbers now so you can really understand how I constructed this deal and why I thought it was worth putting that offer in which got accepted. So originally, the asking price on this property was £400,000. I put in an offer of 375, which after a bit of wriggling around the table, it was accepted. What I've done here is I've broken stuff down into worst, medium and best case scenarios. And as that was accepted, I've put that as the purchase price across all three. We've then got to add in stamp duty and legal costs, which equate to 11,250 lumped together. Well, I've allowed 3,000 for legal costs in there. Then we've got the flat conversion costs. So to get to this figure, I've made it 100 pounds per square foot for the conversion cost. This is just my initial estimate. What you'd need to do is go and get this validated with an actual quote for a builder and see if what my estimate is matches up to that. So if they came in under 134 grand, all good. Then I included some money in there for the architect fees. Now the architect's costs includes things like building regulations, m and &E drawings, plus their actual fees for the work that they would do. And there's some bridging costs in there, so you'd be paying interest on a bridging loan for the build cost, because my plan was to pay cash for this property, finance the, the build with a bridging loan, and then I've got a 10% contingency in there. And that's the same across the board, no matter what it is, which is working out just under 37,000 pounds there. So then my total cost is working out of 557,328 pounds. And my buy price per square foot is 279 pounds per square foot based on that purchase price amount only. If I was to add all of those things up, my actual square foot price is 415 pounds per square foot. And I'd worked out, by Nimbus Maps taking an average view of all the sales, residential sales around this particular postcode, that the average sales price at the time was £421 per square foot. But they say that's gone up now because this is done nearly um, two years ago now. So I had two options about how I was going to use this property. So option one on this, I decided to convert to fully residential. Initially, when I put these figures together, I had the commercial at the bottom split with a rear flat at the back. I had to scrap that idea as that narrow path at the back wasn't really going to work out. I would have to put in another door at the front and go in from the front. These are the prices that I believe I could get for those size properties looking at what recent sales at that point in time. So it goes from worst case of around 168 grand, medium's 185 to best case of 203,000 pounds. Rentals around 10,000 pounds per, per annum. So flat one and flat two are one bed flats, but the ground floor flat's slightly bigger than the, the one above, and I've priced it up just on that average sale price value of 421. Depending on the finishing stuff like that, you might get more, you might get less, depending on how you finish these. And then we've got flat three, which is a two bed flat. So there's more money for that one because it's two beds. That ranges from 210,000 for the worst case, 230 medium and 250 roughly for the best case. So then we've got the gross development value across those three different scenarios of 527K, 579K and 637K. And I'm saying rental wise, it's gonna be about 30 grand. When we look at then the profit across those scenarios, worst case, it's actually losing 30,000 pounds. Middle case, it's making 22 maybe. Best case, it's maybe making 80,000 pounds profit. And there you can see the ROI, minus five, four and 14, not exactly great. And the rent per annum is 
5.38% yield based on what it's costing me, so the 557K, and getting 30% back as the rent. Rentals have gone up since I did this, you might get a little bit more, but either way, the yield isn't that great, under 6%. So the option two then was to keep commercial on the ground floor and convert the uppers to residential. So just two flats across those three floors. But either way, my gross development value on those three wasn't working out that great. So there's a big reliance on all of that to make it into the best case scenario. Middle case isn't really worth the hassle and the aggravation. Even the best case on a return on investment point of view percentage wise wasn't that great. It wasn't over 20% or something. We're kind of at that 14% level so it might be okay but is there better deals out there that you can get so the key people to engage to validate that your numbers are correct is an architect a builder a planner and your broker for your finance if you're getting finance all of those people will be able to give you a quote they might want to come and see the building but as long as you've got plans a title and that type of thing a lot of them will give you something via email initially. A builder, you best taking them around, get them to go and look at everything, walk it through with you, and then they can give you a real life quote as to what it is. The architect may even wanna come there as well before they give you any information as well. But you could just scan stuff with an app like Magic Plan and send it to the architect and they can work from that as well if, you're, if the time is of the essence. As part of my due diligence, I was talking to various architects actually and one particular architect that was local to that area had already had someone go and approach them about this particular property, amazingly. This one particular architect said that it would be very difficult to convert this property to anything more than one flat. So I thought, what, one flat? I've been going for three flats, maybe best case, um, with the commercial, and so that to me was a bit more of a red flag. So these are the reasons why I pulled out. I couldn't create three flats easy, I thought, um, especially with that architect saying that I could only do one flat, and anything more than that would be difficult. So, <laughs> Um, who knows, he's the professional. The rear access as well is extremely narrow, so people coming from the rear of the property to their flat, they wouldn't wanna come along that back street. There's people's bins out there, doors are open, it's narrow, you can't get furniture in, so it had to come through the front. The other issue is that the front was only 3.4, maybe 3.5 meters wide. So then you need to allow for a corridor on one side. So the wall at the back that had that bricked up doorway, there wasn't, I found out, I spoke to the vendor, he'd owned this property for about 30 or 40 years. And um, that had been bricked up by like in 1968 or something like this, he told me. So if you had your right of way restricted for 12 years or more, you've now lost your right of way. So that impacts getting access to that rear area via that other car park that was there, which was probably private grounds, which is why that had been bricked up a long time ago as well. The rear yard was also an issue for me with the three properties having right of way over that. It devalued again the ground floor if I wanted to make that residential because I couldn't make that private. Those people have got rights of way across that at any time, so you know, you could do something there, but it's not a private garden, not a private rear yard. And the flood risk is a potential issue. It adds additional costs, not just that you've got to get a flood risk assessment done for planning. You've also then got to put, maybe put mitigation steps in place to build in flood barriers, raise stuff up, put in different things to mitigate a flood if something does happen, which adds cost to your build, which if you weren't in a flood zone, you don't have to worry about. So when I was looking at these numbers, I didn't like what I was seeing. Based on the middle case, I wasn't seeing enough profit to make all the hassle and aggravation worthwhile. So really my price agreed didn't stack up, especially if I was gonna reduce that just to one flat, if I was gonna take the architect's opinion, one flat commercial at the bottom um, didn't stack up numbers wise with what I was gonna pay for it. So what I did is I went back to the vendor via the agent and said, I'm gonna lower my price and these are the reasons why. I just lowered the price by an amount that I would make as my profit. They basically didn't, didn't like it 
Um, and so I walked away from the deal. So that was the reason why. So what can you learn from this? Make sure that there's good rear access to any commercial property that you want to convert to residential. With good rear access, you can then keep a shop at the front of the property still and the rear bit convert to a flat and they can just go in by the rear exit to that flat. Width then becomes really important if you don't have that rear access. You need to allow at least four and a half meters wide for a property. That way then you can put your corridor in and let the numbers guide you. Don't get emotional. I was emotional on this one, but I managed to take a step back and decided to make the numbers determine what I did. So I revised my number down to what I would be prepared to pay for it. And if they didn't meet it, I'd walk away. They're the key lessons for you on for this one. The key lessons that I learned from this one for going to my next deal. If you want to see what I did next, I've done a video on my commercial to residential conversion, which I'll link to right here. And I've also, if you're a buy to let investor and you want to scale quickly, I've done a video on how to scale from zero to 10 properties in 36 months with just 40,000 pounds. And I'll put that video here. Go and check those out and I'll see you next time.